Netflix has a new horror series, Drew on Origins, also known as The Grudge. Did it deliver in the scary department? Do I recommend you all check it out? We're going to talk about that and much more. After hearing strange noises in her house, a woman calls upon a psychic researcher to investigate the problem. Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again with a new Netflix original series, Drew On Origins, a series I was really looking forward to because it's been a while since I've seen a really good horror show, so I'm very excited to let you all know if it's worth checking out in this non-spoiler review. Before we dive into it, as you can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new content. Give this video a thumbs up helps out the channel tremendously but I also really appreciate it and last but not least if and when you've seen this series let me know what you all thought about it are you a fan of the 98 short film uh the film that came out in 2002 the american version 2004 and various novels and other movies and video games let me know if you all are a fan of this franchise and if you enjoyed this netflix series let's have some fun discussions in the comments below so again spoiler free i didn't feel like i needed to dive into the spoilers with this particular show but I may talk about a particular episode, so I'll let you guys, I'll warn you once I get to that point, probably close to the end of this video, but first and foremost, let's start off with anticipation. Again, I'm a big horror fan. If you've been a fan of mine or been a part of this community for a while, I do a lot of watch-alongs for horror films. I review a lot of horror films whenever I get a chance to see them, so I'm a big horror fan. I grew up with horror, so it's been a while since I've seen a really good horror show on Netflix, maybe two years almost with uh, The Haunting on Hill House, and you know, horror films are kind of hit or miss on the Netflix platform in regards to movies, so... I was looking forward to seeing what this origin has to do with the mythology because I haven't seen the original Japanese version of the film. I just saw the 2004, I want to say, Sarah Michelle Gellar grudge. Don't remember it that much, uh, but I know, like I said, if I'm not mistaken, this is this franchise starting off in '98, which was like two short films, has spawned to like 11 other movies, video games, novels. So this is a very rich, methodical uh, type of lore within this franchise. So I was interested to see what Netflix does with this kind of big budget uh, Japanese show. So first and foremost, starting off with the positives. The atmosphere was very creepy, and there is a lot of disturbing images within this show, particular episode number four, which we'll talk about maybe in the spoilers, but this show really did a good job of creating that atmosphere creating a sense of tension and dread and not knowing what's around the corner. And also one of the things I really kind of liked within this story compared to what I do remember about the film, this dove deeper into the family dramas, this dove deeper into the kind of the origins within this particular house in Tokyo. And within those individual stories, you get these really solid performances across the board. We, you know, the investigator I thought was interesting. The young lady that lost her, you know, without giving too much away, a lady that lost someone close to her and all the different interconnected connective uh, tissues within the, the families that live within this house between the late 80s and the late 90s. I thought it was just so fascinating how the director told the story. And one thing that I definitely loved about this series, I watch a lot of Netflix and it's, you know, 10 hours plus of, of binging shows, but this was six episodes, 25 to 28 minute episode uh, uh, length and time. So the binging of the show one sitting, super quick, very easy to digest to a certain extent because it does get very creepy and very disturbing. But I thought that the director did a good job of just piecing the story together. There were some things that I'll talk about in my criticism here, but just initially, guys, like I said, this was this didn't really scare me. Um, again, scary things and being horrified is very subjective, but I did appreciate the atmosphere created, the tension there, the drama within the families and all the different secrets and all the different things you find out about the families that lived there between these two this 10 year span or so was very fascinating. Um, like I said, there is a particular episode that I really wanted to talk about without spoiling anything, episode four and, and also episode five. And, and from the jump of this episode, from the very first episode, it, it really gets dark. It is a very disturbing show. I will let you all know this is rated R, M for Mature, uh, very disturbing imagery. There is very, uh, there's things that happen that are very disturbing. So I will warn you guys there. But for me, like I said, I've been watching horror since I was yay high. And, and there, there was a particular scene in episode four. That was um, one of the most disturbing things I've seen in a very long time, and I won't say what it was, what it is until I probably get into the spoilers. But it involves uh, a pregnant woman, uh, and I'll just leave it at that. But I thought to show again the cinematography, the score, the tension of the the scenes of when we're kind of developing new things, when people are in the house, when they're not in the house, these kind of ghost-like figures or these, um, you know, these people that have died throughout these years. I thought it was really well done in regards to the tension and making you feel kind of 
you know, creeped out and disturbed throughout the process. But I will say in, in regards to criticisms, this story gets a little complicated at times, a little, you know, the introduction, introduction to new characters and you don't see them for a while, but then they pop up later on. And then when they tie things together, it was kind of confusing at times. Um, at least for me speaking, um, and also too, there were, were some moments where I felt like, you know, they, they went more for the shock value than more of developing within the individual stories within these characters, and like I said, I can't fault the acting, because I thought the acting was pretty solid, but there were some moments where I felt like it was just kind of like, you know, you get into those horror tropes, this doesn't rely on jump scares by any means, but there are some moments where I feel like they went more for the shock value than really diving deep into the psychology of what's going on in the situation, but other than those, like, kind of minor things, this was a really, and I don't want to say enjoyable, because this was very disturbing, but this was a, uh, a well welcome uh, into this uh, franchise, like I said, I haven't seen one of the Grudge films, I didn't see the most recent one you know, earlier this year, I haven't seen any of the sequels, the last one I saw was, the only one I saw is the American 2004 version with uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar, and this will definitely have a more long-lasting effect than what that movie did. So this particular series is going to make me go back and want to explore the, the 98 short film, the original film, the Japanese film in 2002, I believe, and, and seeing the other things that spawned off. So this is something I recommend, guys. Again, this comes full, full warning. This is a very disturbing show, which makes me, you know, like I said, before I dive into spoilers, give the show a watch, but you have been warned. It's very disturbing, especially episode four and very early on, too. Like I said, there's a young lady that has something that happens to her and the show is crazy. The show is bonkers. So I recommend you all check it out if you're a horror fan, if you're a fan of this franchise, and let me know where this ranks for you all, for those that uh, haven't watched it quite yet. So not really a spoiler uh, uh, discussion, but I just want to, spoilers here, episode four, for those that have seen the show, was it just me or was that very eerie and very disturbing with the baby? Uh, the, the guy who finds out that this, the kid is not his and he kills his wife on the couch and pulls out the baby in the stomach and the baby later on when he's in the prison cell climbs to his mouth. That was one of the most disturbing things I've seen, like I said, in my non-spoiler portion, one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in a very long time. So... Again, I just wanted to kind of bring that up to you all to see what you thought about that scene, to see if it was just me that was very unhinged and very disturbed, and that's something that's going to be kind of staying in my brain for a while, so let me know what you all thought about that that have seen the, the show yet. But wrapping up this whole review here, like I said in my non-spoiler, I, I recommend this show, so I, I'm interested to see what they if they do any more uh, with this franchise on Netflix, uh, another series, another anthology maybe, uh, but I really enjoyed this, and I really give props to the director and, that, and the talent involved in this show. And I, like I said, it's going to make me explore the, the previous uh, versions and the original version that came out in, um, you know, in Japan and Tokyo and everything like that. So kudos uh, to the show, in my opinion. So that is it. That's my thoughts on Juan Origins. Let me know in the comments what you all thought about this series. Like I said, for those that haven't seen it, as well as those that have uh, you know, st stuck around to the spoiler half. So thank you for watching this review. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe. Keep an eye out for some content I got coming up tomorrow with my watch along, or not watch along, but a, a series discussion for Netflix Dark uh, at 5 p.m. Central Time. Check out my reviews that I did for uh, most recently Doom Patrol, uh, you know, Warrior Nun, and a lot of things on this channel. So definitely check those out. Uh, again, I hope you all are staying safe. Keep an eye out for some more content. Content coming pretty soon. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.